evening. This is an interesting one. I'm about to go live with Estée Lalonde, content creator, jewellery designer, brand founder, founder of um, Mirror Water Earth, which I will tag as well. Hello, gorgeous Estée Lalonde. Let me just invite you in. There you go. And owner, as I said earlier on, of the best uh, freckles on Instagram bar none. I'm always so jealous every time. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I was trying to set up my ring light, which I never do, but I thought for Nadine, I'm going to have to set up my ring light. <laughs> Listen, I need a ring light. You don't. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Can I just say, have you settled into your new place well? Yeah. So I moved about, oh gosh, in November and it's just taking forever and ever to get everything organized. I moved in July and I actually think I probably didn't feel settled until about Christmas. So it's a lot. It's a lot. And you always, I remember being a kid and hearing, you know, my parent, you know, my mom or whatever saying, oh, moving is so stressful and thinking, what's so stressful about it? You just move. But when you grow up and then you move, you get it. It all comes back to you. <laughs> and I stupidly did this and I'm sure you did the same as well. I stupidly thought, because I didn't want to stress out my pets. And obviously you have pets as well. I didn't want to think, I didn't want strangers coming in and packing up. So I packed everything. Yeah. I unpacked everything. I was still unpacking six months later. Okay, I didn't go that far. <laughs> no, you, I mean, you have a dog and that, you know, friendly. Effie's really friendly and sweet. She's a little bit shy. Cats just do not do well with strangers. So yeah, that's it's a not whole good. other ball game, isn't it? Cats. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just quickly, because I think you have the best interior taste as well. Much work to do on your new place or are you kind of okay? Well, actually, so I'm renting this house, which is like, it's a whole saga, which I won't <laughs> bore you with. <laughs> so it's actually completely perfect. I don't have to do anything to it anyway. And that's one of the reasons I rented it because I just thought, I don't want to move somewhere because I have to rent for a little bit of time. And I thought, I don't want to move somewhere that doesn't feel like home. So I found this place. It's just perfect for what I need it for. But after this, I'm hoping to get my dream home. I don't know where it's going to be, but I'm manifesting it. Are you in a little house as well for the first time? I'm in a house. Uh, yeah, because yes. previously I always think of you as being really high rise and very New York and kind of like that. <laughs> and then I'm like, I think I can see a garden. I think yeah. I can see like a little gorgeous Victorian cottage, can't That's I? That's it. That's where, where I am. And it's so much better because when I moved into my flat, it was just, I was in a different mindset. I was partying. I was go, go, go. Now it's been five years since then. And I am very much settled on the ground. I want my garden. I want my space. And it's just, it's so much better for where I am now. But um, you're going to be talking about interiors, interiors all night, Nadine. No, we are. <laughs> and we go, we're going to talk about the fact that also in the last five years, I'm sorry, hello jewelry designer, brand <laughs> founder. Tell me about this. Cause I mean, you were the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate multi hyphen. I had trouble saying that. Tell me, tell me, I mean, I can understand the jewelry design and I love your jewelry. It's beautiful. And I love all the pictures, all the pictures I was stealing to put up of Este were all of the jewelry line, trust me. But talk to me about the, the idea behind the beauty brand and what you wanted yeah. to create. Cause it's so, it's so you. Can I just say it's Thank so you. you. Thank you. Well, just a brief background. If people are watching and they have no idea who this person is, me, I'm Este. And um, I'm originally from Canada. I started blogging when I uh, moved to Canada, when I was moved to the UK when I was just 19 and started a YouTube channel, blah, 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 blah. Then I, like you said, did this jewelry collaboration, which was one of the best things I've ever done. It's with Daisy Jewelry. Um, so I have four collections with them now. And that was really the first time I worked with the brand to create something that was tactile. Because I think sometimes all of us creators, sometimes it feels like we're not doing anything, you know? So when I created um, something, some of my jewelry. Something visceral, physical you can get your hands on. Yeah. Exactly. And just seeing that process of an idea becoming a product and then marketing that. And that, that, that whole process was fascinating to me. And I really got to see that um, behind the scenes from Daisy during that collaboration. So that was always kind of in my head, like, ooh, maybe I could do this for myself one day. Didn't really know what it was gonna be, but always had, you know, ideas and stuff. Anyway, 
it eventually turned out to be my brand Mirror Water. And everyone always says, tell us about the name, tell us about the name. Um, it's a bath and body care brand. I have some of the products here. That's the um, one I put in the Times. I love that original one that you just held up. And also, yes. can I just say, you're obsessed with bathing. Everybody knows this. Yeah. You're a water baby, right? Yeah, totally. I'm obsessed with water and I don't know. I just, the, the brand was created during the pandemic and I lived alone in that high rise. I felt so lonely and I really did turn to bathing to help me through. And I've been so open about my mental health struggles online. And I've just always found that bathing and showering, it just pushes the reset button for me. You know, it's not a cure all, but it's something that I lean on. And that was kind of the idea behind the brand. And I felt like there weren't really lo a lot of that bath brands and body care brands that were representing, you know, my age group and people who were addicted to social media and all of that. So I thought maybe this is my calling and I got to work. And then once you have that idea, so you're lying in your bath where you have your best ideas. I know you are. I can almost picture your bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And I don't mean this in a perverted way, I promise <laughs> you, but I can almost picture you, you're lying there, you're thinking, you're having your best ideas. How do you go about, who do you trust to, to take your vision and bring it into reality? Because that's a really big leap as well. Well, first of all, the first person I had to learn to trust was myself, because that's why I didn't do this for so long, because I don't think I ever had the faith in myself that I could really commit I could really put the effort in, the energy in, and, and say with all of my heart, you know, I've tried my best here and just be okay if it fails or does or it does well or whatever. So that was the first person that I had to convince was myself. Oh, hello, who's just gone into space NK? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Um, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know that at the time. And I thought, you know, Yes, being a content creator and having an audience, it definitely gives you a leg up. There's no denying that. But there's also a lot of extra eyeballs on you looking to see what you're doing, not hoping you fail, but just, you know, checking out what you're doing all the time. So I felt an extra layer of pressure, actually. Um, anyway, when I got over that, who do I trust? I had some um, mentors. Of course, I've worked in the beauty industry for, you know, over a decade now, which is insane to think about time um and there were a few people that i i said like do you really think i can do this and and they said yes you can and they helped give me the practical tools like okay you need to do a business plan which i didn't even know what that was and then we kind of went from there uh and then did you enjoy the physical process did you enjoy like looking through ingredients testing things you know those wonderful i always love them when i get that kind of unbranded lab sample and you get to try things and and also, what was the idea? Do you have like a core of five products, a, a core of six products, more products? What, what's the plan? Well, I started with the core four products. So it's body scrub, bath salts, body oil, and a solid balm, which is like a tiny little jar of shea butter with amazing essential oils in it. Those were my core products. And let's see where it goes from there. But those were the ones I knew I wanted to start with because that's my ritual. You know, that's what I enjoy and I'm applying it. It smells so good. Um, so those were the things I really wanted to start with. And of course I enjoyed the, the kind of development process, but really I loved the really early stages, which was the Pinterest boards and working with my branding designer and creating the vision. And that was so fun. That was really fun. Tell me how you use the four in a ritual, even though I feel like, you know, you might be explaining it, like over explaining it. But Joe, sure. my, jo, my friend who I create stuff with is obsessed with balms and she's just come on and said the balm is fantastic. Oh, yeah. He's the most critical person in the world. So Okay, Joe, I love that. How do you use it? Like literally okay. layer it up. So you. this is what I do. So if I'm going to have a full blown evening, like I've had the longest week of my life and I need to shut it down. I will, on dry skin, apply my body exfoliator. This is buff. You love it? Oh, that's why I put it into the times. Also, can I just say, what I love about this range is, I feel like body exfoliants, that spa quality, just the smell of it smells like heaven. That old school body exfoliant fell from favor. And I'm like, this just reminds me of being in a five-star spa. Oh, good. amazing. Well, you know, I started my career working in the body shop. That was where I really went to love, learn to love, especially body care. But the, 
the the scrub we spend a lot of time on because I knew I needed it to be a good scrub. It's a salt scrub, and um, it's also really hydrating. So anyway, on dry skin, I will apply this to my whole body. I usually have my Netflix show going on in the background and I'm just scrubbing away happy as anything. And then as my bath is running, I'll be adding a handful or two of my bath salts, soak. Yeah. And as you can see, you can see the little particles in there. We have big hunks of magnesium flakes and Epsom salts and pink Himalayan salts. Now, these are obviously pricey. They're a luxurious product. But I always say if you have a bag of just like Epsom salts, like a huge kilogram bag, add that in and then use this as like the cherry on top. That's what I like to say. Um, so I'm adding that in and then take a little bit of the bath water and I'll just rub that into my skin as I'm standing in the bath. And that's really giving that extra scrub. And then I'll sink in with the scrub on and just let it, just let it do its thing, okay? If I wanna go extra, I'll add a little bit of our body oil. This is our best seller into the water. It's technically a body oil, it's not a bath oil, but I just do that. Um, and you're gonna come out so smooth, so amazing. And then if you have any extra dry areas like elbows, like I have really dry elbows, I'm just a dry person. You just take this balm, it turns into an oil as you massage it in and just apply it to your elbows. And I like to massage my neck with it as well. And I just love balms, they're an old school product but I love them. It's very interesting. Somebody just asked, are you available in the US straight away? Yes. So okay. we ship to the US and so does Space NK, um, but we're looking for a US, US retailer. So let us know, what do you think? Where are you, everybody? Um, now, the other thing I noticed when I went to Westfield the other day, and I would sign up for this straight away, and I know you did a pop-up the other day at Space NK, yeah. but at the new Westfield store, they have these experience places with sort of little kind of, oh my God, if you could create a quick, quick kind of routine ritual around that, heavenly. This is the greatest idea. And Ginny, if you're watching from Space and K, let's make this happen. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tag Ginny. I suppose in a way, maybe, no, because they've got basins and everything. You could maybe just do a leg and arm treatment. Or even like a hand massage. It's so oh, nice. Yes. Manicurists love our scrub. Yes. And also, can I just say, uh, and then somebody says, Louisa says to the EU as well, Space yep. definitely shipped to the EU. Yeah, we do. And do you do uh, direct to consumer on your website as well? Yeah. So that's how we started off, which is interesting because I thought I'm going to go direct to consumer forever and ever. I'm going to do Glossier model and, and all of that. But, you know, I think having that tick mark from someone like Space NK, it just takes your brand to another level, really. And also, I just think it gets so many people's eyes on your brand. That day I went down, and Ginny is really influential. That day I went down to uh, Westfield on the opening day. The reach of the people that were just walking around there, just taking pictures and stuff like that, was incredible. It's just really powerful. And it gets you directly into the US straight away as well. Totally. So yeah. really pleased to be with them. Uh, and then I think um, moving forward, without giving too much away, could you see yourself doing more products? Or could you see yourself doing different fragrances maybe? Or... Yeah, so I have to say people love our fragrance, so I'm gonna stick to that. And mm -hmm. we've had so many requests for a body wash and that's what I wanna do because I just love that shower bathing thing and I kind of wanna complete the ritual. But um, you know, I have hopes maybe to one day go into skincare, dare I say makeup, but you know, these are all big dreams for the future. And the name you didn't actually get around to explaining, so Mirror, oh. Water, Earth. Is it a sort of grounding ritual for you as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's, so Mirror, Water, I always like to think of our brand as all about self-reflection. And for me, bathing is my time to hold a mirror up to my life or my week or my day and just check in and process and, and just figure out what I'm doing in life, you know. I've had so many types of baths. There's the morning bath where you're trying to get positive. There's that just been dumped bath. There's that bath where you've had a super long day, you know? So there's always something to check in about. And also water is just so healing and it's nature's mirror in a way. So that's why we call it mirror water.
very interesting. I'm a shower person in the morning and a bath person at night. So bath is actually not for cleaning at all. It's just for relaxing. Yeah. So I could see even one or two shower products in the morning. You Me could too. You could basically do a really light, refreshing shower gel, but you could also do one of those shower oils that just kind of turns to water and just, oh. Oh, you want to come work with us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, listen, by the time we finish, I'll have done a whole host of brand consultancy for you because I, I know what I would want to use and yeah. I also know what my girlfriends would want to use. And I agree with you. I think it's really hard to nail the fragrance. And I think you've nailed the fragrance perfectly. Just quickly describe the fragrance of the products. So me. it's essential oils. It's not a synthetic fragrance. It's a blend of vetiver, which is a gorgeous root. Heavenly. So good. Smells so expensive. It's just, well, probably because it is actually one of those most expensive. Yeah. Um, cedar wood and Canadian black spruce. They're trees. And I grew up in Canada, so I wanted it to remind me of the forests I grew up around. And also we have bergamot in there. So something a little citrus to, to lift it. So grounding, but lifted. And I just wanted bath products that didn't smell like lavender. That was kind of the aim of my game. <laughs> I, it's so true. Also, going through your list of, uh, of essential oils there is like my list of favorite ingredients because I'm not a particularly floral, rosy, kind yeah. of lavendery girl. And what I love about them as well is anybody could use these at any age. I think they are really elegant and beautiful. Can I just request here another one? I'm going to say candle room fragrance. I I'm know. Diffusing oils. I'm all up for that. I know. I want it all. I want it all. Yeah. I want it all and I want it now. But trust me, if anybody's watching. Uh, so where do you source the products and where quickly are the products made? Here in the UK. Everything's made in the UK. We that try means, to get all of... You can never leave now, Esther. You know that. I'm never... Okay. You know, Nadine, I've got my citizenship now, so I'm stuck here. Congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> Which is... It, it's wild because, you know, even when we met, I don't know how old I would have been, but I was a fetus, basically. And, um, and so were you. And um, just trying to figure out what I was doing with my life. But anyways, now I guess I'm a citizen and I'm staying here. <laughs> okay, so you need this brand to be so successful you can buy your mum somewhere in in London. Literally my goal. Yeah. I know, I, I can tell that because I can just say also your mum is just, I love her when she appears on social media and I'd like her to be on social media more because I think there needs to be more representation of cooler older women and I think your mum's amazing. I know, she's amazing, but you know what? She She's a private person and she can't handle it because it's a lot and it really is, it really is. Yeah. So I want her on here more, I miss her every day. Okay, so before we go into your other beauty brands and your beauty products as well, can I just say you're a private person and what a lot of people don't know about you is you are really, really shy. Yeah, I wasn't sure what you were going to say there. <laughs> and it's very interesting. I have a niece that's a really similar age to you and you remind me of her so much. And she's also very beautiful. And I think she gets a, a reputation sometimes as being aloof, but she's not. She's so shy in social circumstances. Yeah. It's like, you could be sisters. It's amazing. Oh, it's very, well, I've always yeah. wanted a sister, so hook us <laughs> up. But, you know, I think it's like people see me online, and, and I think this is the case with a lot of people, but, you know, we started sharing our lives online because we were so shy, and we didn't have a lot of real life friendships and, and relationships. So that's why I started doing this. All of a sudden, you know, I have to be at events with people, and this is, it's not in my, in my nature, honestly. I, I am private. I'm shy. I'm, I don't know, I just like to do my own thing, you know, so I've had to kind of overcome a lot of that and, and create confidence in myself. And it hasn't been an easy journey. But um, how was your first press trip? How did you feel standing up like being on the up? Este and I have been on a gazillion press trips and to suddenly stand up as a brand founder and say, welcome to my world must have yeah. been quite nerve wracking. It was so nerve wracking. And honestly, I have to say to all the PRs and publicists out there who have done this, you are <laughs> angels. It is so hard. <laughs> it's a lot easier to be enjoying the good food and the wine. Um, but it was it was a good full circle moment for me. And everybody was was so nice. I don't think I'm going to be going into event management anytime no. soon. But Listen, listen, we'll leave it there. I would be the world's worst PR because I'd have to put up with people like me and I just <laughs> with that. Right. right, so we're definitely going to put all four Mirror Water products in, obviously. I will tag them all below. Space NK plus Direct, I'll tag them all. But what else do you love? I okay. think you have the most beautiful skin and hair, so whatever you're using, I'm buying. 
Okay, well, first thing I have to talk about is the Kichi Forever Oil. Have you tried this? No, I have not. And I love to discover new brands. Okay, this is a kind of a new brand. I believe they're soft in Liberty. Um, I, I got a facial by the woman who owns Kichi. I think her clinic is called Kichi. This oil, I thought, oh, another face oil, like don't care. But honest to God, this face oil is incredible. I love it. So just a what, couple drops at night. Okay, so what's unique about it? What's different? Because I know you love oil. So what's different about that and the other oils? You well, it's just, it says it's a cold pressed blend. It's got, you know, ashwagandha, all these, all these super fruits and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But for me, it's the texture. It, it doesn't like sit on top of the skin. It really blends into the skin and I love it. My other favorite oil is the MV Organic. I don't know what they're called now, but it's the Rose Booster. But this is really, really good. What does it smell of? Oh, I don't know. I'm usually so tired at the end it's of the probably day. Probably quite herbal if it's actually. Yeah, just like regular oil, not yeah. scented. Okay. When you said Ki Chi, I'm presuming you mean Chi as in Ki Chi. Is it Q-U-I-C-H-I? No, K-I-C-H-I. Oh, okay, right. I did get it right the first time. Brilliant. Okay, and I'll, I'll credit, credit Liberty. Yeah, she's really nice too. Okay, and then more skincare. The Face Gym Hydro Bound Serum. Is this good? Because I like it. I I mean, it's a beautiful serum. It's quite expensive. But have you seen recently they've just d developed uh, delivery systems for their serums? Oh, so no, they've, de I they've delivered, re they've developed really clever little micro rolling. I want to say micro needling, but it's very subtle oh. and it delivers the serum straight into the skin. Oh, that's so, so cool. cool. I know you love your affordable hyaluronics and all that stuff. And I'm so there with you. I love the Vichy one, but I'm just mentioning this and it's more of an overarching face gym. For me, I am addicted to face gym. Have you been to Claridge's? No. Okay, right. We're tanking the face gym here now. <laughs> Politely, because they basically have, because the thing, the thing, the problem, the only problem I've ever had with face gym is I'm not very good at having facials in public. Oh. Oh my God, the whole cocooning down in the basement, five floors under Claridge's. Ooh. And they go like hell for leather. Like, so they have all the gadgets and not that you need it, but they have all the gadgets and the micro needling. It's incredible down there. Okay, that sounds like something I need because I, I love like good face pounding, like just lift it and yeah. do what you need to do. Okay, all right. So I wanted to mention that. Okay, a fragrance I'm obsessed with is the Byredo de Los Santos. Oh, it's beautiful, yeah. Do you like this? Yes, tell me why you like it. Every time I wear it, people ask me what I'm wearing and I'm not just saying that. Every yeah. time I wear it, I've used half the bottle already and I have tons of fragrances so I never get through them. It's it's like very Palo Santo-y, it's very woody, but there's kind of like a minty kind of fresh um, point to it. I I have to put some on right now. I It's uh, very interesting. You have very similar taste in fragrances to me, which I don't think is very t t typically feminine. It's agreed. not typically girly. It's much more kind of I mean, not that fragrance is ever gender specific, which is ridiculous, because why is a rose feminine and wood masculine? But I personally prefer the woody, Same. sort of citrusy kind of, I love that idea. Yeah, I want beautiful. someone to smell me and think I was like rolling around in a sexual woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My way of describing my favorite fragrance is to discover a vintage green suede handbag under an oak tree that like, oh my god that. that's a lot more eloquent than what i yeah, just... the, no i love that yours is sexy and mine is just vintage but yeah and also ben gorham the founder of byredo is just one of the sexiest creatures ever Honestly. created on this planet <laughs> don't even get me going on him. don't even get that literally there's not a woman in the beauty industry who's not just a little the hair oh, i know the hair <laughs> okay a lip balm this is yep. by fenty Okay. Fenty Beauty, again, thought I'm such a lip balm snob. I would never just like just any old lip balm. This lip balm has really weird packaging. So you twist it and it comes up and you apply it. It's just the most, it's not s sticky per se, but it really s gets on your lips, seals it in and moisturizes at the same time. This lip balm, I'm telling all my friends about it. 
Okay, so I have to say, I think she's one of the, Rihanna, the founder of that, has created one of the best celebrity ranges. Whenever I see a celebrity crane range, I'm like, oh, who needs it? I don't know if it's her, I don't know if it's her team. Pretty much everything is amazing. Can I just yeah. ask what it smells like though? Because she does tend to have things smelling a little bit Haribo. This smells good. This is like oh, more okay. vanilla. Okay, All right. Barely. It reminds me of like, kind of vaguely of like an old matte lipstick kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's sometimes, really good. And have you smelled her fragrance as well? Because sometimes no. her stuff is just a little bit too va va boom kind of overtly sure. sexy. But then she is gorgeously va va boom sexy. So yeah. I want to get pregnant just to dress like her <laughs> when she was. I mean, you know? I mean, she's just, I saw her live once. And I have to say, she's not the best performer live. <laughs> she's just... <laughs> Sorry, she's no Beyonce, right? But God, she's the sexiest performer I've ever seen. Wow. She was basically dry humping the stage. And I was like, I'm in, girl. Leave and me, Beyonce's leave. going on tour. Oh my God, did you see the picture she released today? The I was zooming. Can I, I, seriously, so I was invited on the Madonna tour and I was like, no, come back to me when Beyonce goes on tour. I was so jealous of those people in Dubai. I thought you might be invited because it was your level of influencer. I was so jealous. I'm never an envious, jealous person. I just wanted to be there so we much. We need to get you tickets to, to okay. go see her. Brands out there, if yeah. you like to take a mother-daughter combo Beyonce. <laughs> I would definitely your... go. I Miriam. am dying to go. Yeah. Okay, Refai. Oh, love. First and foremost, I met Jess Hunt at an event who's the co-founder. Yeah. She's so gorgeous. I almost was like, you can't possibly be successful, gorgeous, and nice. It's just like not possible. She is one of the nicest girls I've ever met. She's stunning. She's smart. She's created the best eyebrow sculpt that's ever been created. If you, have, if you don't know this brand, you need to find it. And the reason it's interesting is because both SA and I, naturally, I mean, I was really blonde as a child, but our eyebrows are strikingly similar. sa has got nicer brows than me. But it's really hard to make a blonde brow look full. And yet yeah. somehow you can do it with those products. You need this. Everyone needs this. Everyone in my office has now purchased this because you apply it. And then it also has the brush to yeah. like smooth it all down. I love it. And it's somehow volumizing without being cakey. It, I know. Make, it makes your brows, you can sculpt them and you can put them up you can put color on over the top afterwards but you don't need the color yeah. if you've got Estee's coloring it's gorgeous love it in fact I love the whole range same the blushes I love it all and honestly we all love doing our brows you know brows are everything but for some reason when I use this in the morning I feel there's no other word I feel fierce in the yeah. morning Go on, the, if you don't know the brand, go on Discover the Brand and look at the tutorials where you see people with like not naturally big, gorgeous Cara Delevingne brows, but like a little bit sort of sparse and yeah. not brows and watch what they do. Yeah. The brand is Refi. Re yes. Re Refi? Refi, I think. Refi. Like I Defy. Right, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Rose Ink. Yeah. Um, Love this her. is their cream bronzer. Okay. Have you ever met her? Yes. Now, how can somebody be, be that beautiful, that nice, and that creative? Talking of Jess Hunt, oh my God, seriously. It's Rosie a lot Huntington to take Whiteley in. is lovely. She is so nice, and she's just down to earth, normal. Well, I don't know if you could say normal. She's incredible, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Anyway, her cream bronzer, as you can see, I've been using it. It's similar to something like the Chanel, you know, cream bronzer it's a cream bronzer but it's in the shade parrot clay and for me it just works and I just love the branding I love the design I love her so I like using it yeah oh, and is it I presume it's refillable as well which makes yeah it I think so good. yeah because the the blushes are the blushes are quite heavily pigmented but the bronzer is absolutely beautiful and yeah. if you ever get a chance to go not you but everybody's watching if you ever get the chance to go and meet her in person in space NK how anybody who can look seriously think I think she might be the most beautiful woman I've ever met how she can look like that and just be so nice is amazing she's just a delicate and her, st her style 
Yeah. When she does her looks for the week and you just swipe by. And then also I'm a little bit like you. I look over her shoulder to look at her house. And her house is flawless too. Oh my God, her house. And she's always in like head to toe the row. And I'm like, oh God, gold. The best taste. The best taste. And if she wasn't such a lovely person, I wouldn't love her as much as I do. But yeah, I know. Ma major woman crush. Yeah. Someone just said, I got to meet her with Katie Jane Hughes. What a duo. Love Katie. Love do. Okay. Katie's, Katie's like really spunky and feisty. As oh, well. she's a lot. Rose is just like an ethereal, gorgeous yeah. sort of angel floating through the world. <laughs> I can't really keep up with Katie. If I spend two hours with Katie, I'm like, whoa, you are on another frequency, she's girl. A, she's a firecracker. Fire. Yeah. Okay, Hourglass. Mm -hmm. This is in the shade Mist. It's one of their, I don't know what these are called, but it's like the really shiny, glossy ones. Yeah. I love them. They're my favorite type of lip color. I just, oh. I'm, I'm quite low maintenance. I can't be bothered with lining and putting heavy colors on. It's beautiful, really. Hey, but look, I'm not wearing any makeup except my eyebrows and what's left from this morning. I just put that lip gloss on and it just really polishes you, you know? And imagine if I had a, a slicked bun, I'm going out. It's like your lips on their best day. And it's yeah. really hydrating, but it's low maintenance. You don't have to look too closely. I love it. Really nice. Love. Again, the, the, have you met the founder of Hourglass? No. Really lovely woman. Absolutely wow. lovely woman. Does amazing charity drives and everything. She's oh, just wow. yeah, really nice. I'd love to meet her. I mean, you're the same as me. I, I'm just obsessed with female founders and, and just founders in general. I'm just, especially since doing it, I'm just amazed at what people can accomplish and how they got started, what their story is. I love all podcasts about stuff like that. I will always, always support a female brand founder because for me, I come from an era 30 years ago where you literally used to go to these business events and it would just be stale, male and pale. I'm really sorry, but like 65 year old men <gasps> in suits who had nothing in common with any of their consumers. When you meet Rose or you meet whoever you, you know, you are your own consumer. Nobody mm -hmm. understands woman's needs better than a woman I'm afraid it is too true it is too true okay I have three more products left okay go on two from Charlotte Tilbury okay the TikTok got me the flawless filter <laughs> how come you've only just discovered that I don't know I've been a little busy <laughs> <laughs> been busy creating brands okay wait but, you know what shade you are in flawless filter because people will ask i'm three okay. shade three and i just love it the older i get the less foundation i'm wearing and i just like to wear a glowy thing i mean your it. skin is flawless anyway young lady i'm gonna sound like your mum here but it is immaculate. well i was talked down from the ledge of getting botox a couple months ago i'm not yeah. getting it you don't yeah. need it anyway. How old are you, Estee? 32. Yeah, you're a baby. You really don't need it. I think I was 44 when I first had it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, become a late adopter. You don't need it, really. Okay, that's what I'm going to do because... Check in I'm with me in 15 years' time and I'll tell you, but... And tell me the truth. Oh, okay. I'm famous for that, right? So <laughs> flawless filter and what was the other Charlotte Tilbury product? The other one is just the new highlighter. Gorgeous. So it's the Glow Glide and it's the Moonlit Glow and it's just great. It's just simple. You know, I don't really have time to be messing around, but it just, it just works. Yeah. I love I mean, it. I, I have to say again, Charlotte's one of those people. I've known Charlotte a very, very long time through all of her iterations on different brands, working for Tom Ford and working for Helena Rubinstein and stuff like that. I think she's hilarious. I think she's really funny. I do think she's completely bonkers, but my God, she gets color and she gets what women want. She just totally. gets it. And she gets it because she's a slightly insecure woman and she's worked with wonderful women and she's worked with older women and she's worked with her mom and she's worked with her sister yeah. and she works with her nieces. And I just love that she works with her entire family. And So do I. Yeah. I, I'm so in the Charlotte Tilbury cult, even though, and this is kind of controversial, but the packaging is not my style, you know, I'm not, No, it's not my style, yeah. but I don't care. Like, no. you know, rose ink, that's my style. I love that kind cool, of thing. Cool, minimalist, modern. Exactly. Look, I, I'm not the gold old school packaging either, but no. there's something about Charlotte when I create content with Joe as well. And Joe obviously originally launched Charlotte Tilbury over here. There's something about her where I just think, She's the one person that can get me to use a blue eyeshadow. She's the literally. one person, li like literally, 
Like, and I love Pat. I love Pat McGrath stuff, but it seems slightly too out of reach and yeah. designer and cool for me. Where there's something about Charlotte where you just she just goes, kind of, "Come on, you can do it, darling. You'll be fine." And you're like, "Okay, let me wear a blue eyeshadow." <laughs> you're so right. You're so right. I, I love all of her products. And every time I go, you know, say I'm in John Lewis or I'm at Selfridges, whatever, the counter still to this day is rammed of people. Yeah, and also she hires really lovely, approachable makeup artists. Yeah. So never feel intimidated. Go on counter. Yeah, try like go and have your makeup done. It's amazing. And yes, I'm sorry, that's very English. Bonkers means slightly crazy. It's a <laughs> it's an affectionate way of saying she's like really energetic and slightly yeah. field. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a good connotation. Okay. A good connotation. It is. My last product is not beauty, but I just thought beauty girls love candles. I do. Austin's. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Holy moly. There is nothing like the Austin's, first of all, all their candles and their fragrance, but the jasmine candle for me. Oh, God. Bury me in it. <laughs> it's very interesting. So you have picked a candle I wouldn't have thought in terms I know. of fragrance. Because jasmine is very floral, very traditional. Very, I mean, it's white and it's sexy flowering and quite va va boom. But I have got about three different Austin candles around my house. They're beautiful. Yeah. Well, because you know the best of the best. Yeah. And there's just nothing like these candles. It's actually really difficult to develop a candle, going back to future products. And they have completely nailed it. And the, the reason I like the jasmine is because it smells like real jasmines when you walk outside and there's a big old jasmine bush it's like oh my god that's heaven to me but i love their cashmere and velvet as well i think that's the one i would have thought you'd gone for some that's the one yeah. i've got downstairs the thing about jasmine is and I, again i'm not a floral person but there's something that's really fresh and quite citrusy about it but full-on baba boom sexy as well so it's gorgeous it's not like rose or no oh yeah it's um it's and Nadine, before we wrap up, I just have to say, I was listening to, you were on someone's podcast, and now I can't remember whose podcast it was. It was an older episode, I don't know. But you were talking about your story and everything. And I just have to say, you really are so respected and loved in this industry. I'm so honored to be here chatting with you. And I just, I just think what you've done is amazing with your career and you're, as a person as well, I love your vibe, I love your energy, you are goals. Thank you. If I could be one thing, it would be goals to a new generation because I'm ready to pass the baton on. The beauty industry is so amazing and it doesn't matter whether you're an old school journalist or a TV presenter or a radio presenter or an influencer or author, whatever you are. There's something about the beauty industry that's very welcoming to people and to women. And I really love that. You don't get it so much in fashion, but there's yeah. something about the beauty industry when you find your tribe. They're amazing. They really are. Yeah. And, we, and we support each other. We are women supporting women. And that's something that's been a revolution in the last 10 years. So these female brand founders like you are just incredible. And like, seriously, kudos to you. You're amazing. So creative and such a vibrant, energetic force for somebody who's so shy. Thank you, Nadine. Oh, this was so much fun. This I is want exciting for me. All of the products that everybody asking, obviously you can come and watch it. I'll list every single product. And if I get them wrong, Este will come in and correct me because she, <laughs> she's detail focused, unlike me. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Enjoy Adore your evening. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye.